All right. Uh, first and foremost, I want to give our glory, honor, and praises to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai by Shem Akakodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, the ruling of Teach Well. Peace of salutation to the elect 144 first fruit. All right. So, um, just wanted to jump into a lesson here, just with your integrity. Uh, really, I'm a, I'm just gonna say the word integrity in a biblical biblical fashion, which is uprightness. As you can see, I have uh, Psalm 143 and 10 on the screen, um, and just primarily with you know things dealing with maybe family members and things of that nature. What I'm talking is something that is very easy to combat in the spirit. This is certain things that you may have. Uh, experience when you, in your, you know when you first came into the truth and things of that nature as we know the spirit quickening so I know individuals who are you know coming across this you know word and this truth are you know may have been dealing with it or uh, like I said the spirit quickening they deal with it better than some of us who've been in it been knowing the truth or been in the truth for 10 plus years you know what I'm saying because uh, just for me just to give personal testimony, when I first came into the truth, you know, I was extremely zealous. Um, that's what my name means. Um, but I was extremely zealous and I, my family came against me and I it was an unfamiliar territory. I used to be very close with family, you know, um, growing up with them in Louisiana and things of that nature. Used to be very close, but then that, that changed dramatically when I got into the truth. I'm just now repairing... Uh, certain you know family relationships you could say after 10 years later you know after finding out about the truth 10 years later you know what i'm saying so it's it's a it's a work in progress but you know what i'm saying but one thing i wanted to <clears throat> come in here with is your integrity that's no matter how you deal with it or how you dealt with it or how you're dealing with it now, don't compromise your integrity for some family shit. Because we all know what Yahweh Shai said um, when they came to him asking about, um, you know, family and stuff like that. You know, he pointed to to his disciples. So like you one moment. Yeah, so he pointed to his disciples and things of that nature and let them know who who was who. You know what I'm saying? So this is Psalm. Matter of fact, um, one second. Let me get that. I think it's, uh, let's see if I'm tripping. Yeah, Mark 3 and 31, it says, There came then his brethren and his mother, and standing without sent him sent unto him calling him and the multitude sat about him and they said unto him behold thy mother and thy brethren without seek uh for thee just to clarify who's speaking it says and he answered them saying who is my mother or my brethren and he looked around about on them which sat about him and said behold my mother and my brethren says, for whosoever shall do the will of the Most High, the same is my brother and my sister and my mother. You see, so the Lord is not, wasn't going to, you know, compromise his integrity or his uprightness for his quote unquote biological family. So it's the same thing that we need to walk in now. So let's get started. Psalm 143 and 10. And this, this, this lesson is like a beginner for, you know, you know, zero to six months in the truth type, you know, individual, how to deal with family and how it comes, because family's going to come against you. You know, my, my relationship with family was tainted. I'm not, I'm going to keep it real. A lot, you know, some brothers are still good with their family. I'm not a family man no more. You know what I'm saying? I'm not good with nobody in my family. You know, they all came against me. I don't hold no grudge or nothing against them. You know, the only person I really keep contact with is my dad. You know what I'm saying? And that was, you know, I've always had a good relationship with my dad. He kind of, you know, was, he didn't really come against me like that, but he was trying to understand it more. So, you know what I'm saying? But 
you know, ever since watching that video from Apostle Gabar, make amends with your dad or with your father when he brought out Ecclesiasticus 3, you know, that's what I try to do, you know, because at first I just left everyone alone, you know what I'm saying? So, but that's neither here nor there, but some brothers are good with their family. I'm just not, not every brother's going to have the same situation, you know? So Psalm 43 and 10 says, teach me to do thy will, right? The scriptures say, let thy will be done. Um, when you read Matthew, the sixth chapter in the Ottawa and Paul, you know, that's something you should be sending up every single day. So in that prayer, it says, thy kingdom come, let thy will be done. So it says, teach me to do thy will. So we already understand what the will of the Heavenly Father is. And then we already understand the, the position that he put us in. Okay, so that's your job. So there are marks an established point of integrity that you are to keep. The Lord gave you integrity. Okay, so let me say this too, because, you know, the scriptures liken Israel as unto a woman. I'm going to get that milk scripture real quick, but still hits home every time we read it. Oops, Salaki. Darn, click six. It says, uh, Jeremiah 6 and 2, I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. Now, just understanding the nature of a female, okay, um, females don't have priority. They have to be given priority. Uh, and priority, you can know, uh, can be symbolic or not symbolic. It can be synonymous to responsibility. Women, you have to give women responsibility to keep them busy, you know, in a good work, if you could say. So it's the same thing the Lord does to us. We're liking as a, you know, a delicate woman unto him. So he gives us priorities because we didn't have none. Think about yourself before you got this truth. Jesus, have to keep it real, fucking real. Most of us was just some simple minded ass niggas in the world. You know what I'm saying? We didn't have any priorities, responsibilities or things of that nature. Or we were walking aimlessly and didn't have any type of direction or motive or purpose until we were given priorities and responsibilities, all right? Because that's what you have to do with a woman. Because if you don't, she'll find a way to fuck off, you know, do some wicked shit, you know, straight up. And that's what that's what was happening to us. You know, I was uh, meditating the other day on women. This ain't going to be a lesson on women. But I will say this, you know, um, you know, you, you would think if, you, if, if the world was just men, Men will survive A-OK, because when you read Gen Genesis, it was just, you know, Adam at first, and then he was given a help me. I'm not sitting here saying that the world was only men in the beginning, because the scripture say he created he, female, male and female, because he, uh, the Lord did say be fruitful and multiply, and the only way you could do that is with a male and a female coming together. Simple. I'm just going to leave that at that. And then, um, but, you know, when well, I'm like, yeah, kind of lost track, but anywho, you know, yeah, that's what I was going to say. If it, just so hypothetically speaking, if there was only men on the planet Earth, the planet Earth will still flourish and keep going. All right. And let's just implement immortality in it, too. OK, because that's how things were supposed to be in the beginning anyway. So let's say it was just men. All right. It will flourish. Everything will be organized. And logistics will be correct and things of that nature. Okay. Of course, the right men in, in, in uh, rulership and in power. Now, say if the world was just women and give them immortality, um, it would be chaos. And I would, <laughs> it's so crazy. You can even give a woman immortality and she'll still find a way to die. <laughs> you know, so they need direction and they need to be given Priorities, so it's the same thing with us. So that's why when you read Psalm 143 and 10, it says, Teach me to do thy will. Lord, can you give me some priorities and responsibilities? So I, you know, I'm just, you know, because when boredom strikes, people start doing stupid things. You know what I'm saying? So we need to be occupied. And so he gives us work to do, aka what I'm doing right now. It says, For that, uh, for thou art my power. Right. He's our power source. So he, we, we're leaning on him to give us work to do. And he manages us. When you go to work, exactly the point. <laughs> I really don't have to say anything more. When you go to work, 
All right. So just to, if you don't catch my drift, when you go to work, you're looking for work. So when you get to work, you're going to be looking for work to do. So we go to work every single day in this truth. We're not off the clock ever. This is what you can consider active duty. You know, we are continually working and looking for work. All right. Cause in, in our management will give it to us. There's always something to do. So it says, thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Now, when you go into that word uprightness, that's why in the inception of this video, I was talking about integrity. Uprightness is integrity. Okay. Which integrity is honesty. Things that I need. These are all synonyms to one another. Okay. So pretty much uprightness is your integrity. So you do not compromise your uprightness or your integrity. So this is Proverbs 28 and 6. All right. <clears throat> Proverbs 28 and 6. It says, better is the poor that walketh in uprightness. And, you know, that's us, man. The poor literally, you know, uh, paycheck to paycheck, things of that nature. Of course, we got Psalm 127. You know, you rise up early just to eat the bread of sorrows. Rise up early, say up late just to eat the bread of sorrows. Just loosely paraphrasing. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, poor in social status, poor in a lot of aspects. You know, if y'all watch this video, y'all can put in the comments below what we're pouring. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, but better is the poor that walketh in his uprightness. And us being in this truth is the uprightness. All right. This is the integrity. We walk in integrity. We walk in honesty, uprightness. OK, meaning we have a good character about ourselves. No one can say anything that's obscure or just wrong about us. Like we didn't do anything to anybody. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, it says then he that is perverse in his ways which is an individual that has compromises integrity. And that's, we we live in the valley of the shadow of death, according to Psalm 23. That's all everyone around us has done, compromise their integrity every minute of the day. It says, though he be rich. It says, uh, verse 27 is a good point I want to bring out here. It says, whoso keepeth the law is a wise son, right? The law is our priorities. You know, so we have a list of priorities that we must maintain in order to do the job correctly. So, yes, we do here at GMS preach to keep the law. All right. But it's not only about that. OK, we got to implement sprinkle faith on that, too. OK, because we are in a grace period of liberty and we are in slavery. We can't keep the law to the 100 percent ability like we want to, like our spirit yearns to do. All right. But doesn't mean you disregard the law just because, oh, where, you know, the scriptures talk about that. Just loosely paraphrasing the cloak of maliciousness or whatnot. You see what I'm saying? But or just abusing your liberty. So it says, whoso keep the law is a wise son. Those are our priorities that we are to keep. Those are our duties and the jobs that the Heavenly Father gives us to work. It says, but he that is a companion of a riotous of riotous men shameth his father. Right. So when you go into that word riotous, it means worthlessness. All right. So pretty much this scripture is um, telling you to stay away from the children of Belial, which is the children of worthlessness. All right. So if you're a companion with a worthless with worthless men, you're going to shame yourself. <laughs> and your and your biological father and your spiritual father, all right. So just keep your integrity, especially when it comes to the, your family, because that's what initially what I was speaking about. They're gonna ask you to do things, and oh, come, come, come to church with us. I'll come to this baptism, or you know, come do this. Absolutely not. You know, you don't have to. Even if you don't want to be straight up, you just, you just use wisdom and be like, you know, man, well, I, I see. See what I can do. I'm not making any promises, knowing that you're not about to fucking show up. You know what I'm saying? Or you can just be straight up. No, I don't believe in that. So, And then they just have to take it as it comes. And you, you take it as it comes, too, because these, these riotous individuals, worthless individuals, will rebut you in a very rude manner. Just have thick skin and be like, I mean, okay. Shit, I work customer service. <laughs> you know, I always tell people. 
who sit here and tell me, you guys still have hope in humanity or there's still good people out here. I tell them, go work customer service and you'll find out. And really what we do in this truth is customer service. All right. This is a ministry. Ministry means uh, minister means to serve or to be a servant. All right. So we do do customer service in the, in, in the, uh, in the truth, you know, in the spirit, you know, and we see how people are. They're full of shit. There is no hope in humanity. There's only hope in your house shy in, in, the, in the 144 waking up so we can get the hell up out of here. Simple and plain as that. You know, everyone else is riotous, children of Belial, worthless. All right. There is no hope in humanity because most of humanity is going to get eradicated by the nuclear missiles anyway. You know what I'm saying? So, Lord willing, this was edifying and understanding. I want to give all glory, honor, and praises to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai Bashim, and And like always, repent for Yahweh Shai is coming back sooner than what me and you believe. All right, shalom.